best. Hey guys, it's Lavender here. Welcome back to my channel. It's Lavender here, and today I want to talk about a Lifetime movie true crime case that I'm really inspired by to do this video. The crime case that I am referring to is I want to talk about a case that happened in 1989. Um, it is a Lifetime movie called Outrage at Glen Ridge. It is my all-time favorite Lifetime movie and this case is just so sad and not many people know about it so I just want to cover it in my next true crime case meeting right now. So let's get started. So, in 1989, a mentally handicapped teenage girl, a 17-year-old girl, Leslie Faber, in the book and movie, that's what she's called, the real victim's identity and real name was never made public for protection, I'm assuming, was raped with a broomstick and a baseball bat by members of the Glen Ridge High School football team in Glen Ridge, New Jersey. The thing is, is that um, this actually isn't the first time that she has been sexually assaulted. She was actually sexually assaulted before in 1983 in an unrelated incident. If I'm correct, she was sexually assaulted by a rich teenage boy. And um, if I'm correct about that, it's been so long since I watched the movie, but yeah. And this is actually also not her first encounter with these football player boys. This event attracted worldwide attention mainly due to the perception that the assailants had been given special treatment by the school and by local authorities due to their status as a football player stars. And that's actually really sick. There's people that will do like anything for like, you know, money and stuff. Like, for example, I watched like the King of the Hill episode. I forgot what it was, but it was where um, this little player, he wasn't doing too good in math or something, or history, and Peggy Hill, like, decided to teach him to do math, and, like, and then all the staff turned against her because that was their stall, that was, that was their star football player. It's really sad, and it's disgusting, and I don't think it's right what these people were trying to do. They're trying to give them a pass just because they're football players. It's disgusting, so yeah. It was also the first time a sexual assault of a woman with an intellectual disability captured worldwide national attention. The events of the Glen Ridge rape were adapted again, like I said, stated before, into a television lifetime film slash movie called Our Guys Outrage at Glen Ridge is the lifetime movie's name. It premiered on ABC in 1999 and is rarely, if not never, shown on the Lifetime channel anymore. I don't know. I don't know any like vintage like Lifetime movie like like 80s, 90s, early 2000s Lifetime movies that are even on the Lifetime channel anymore. So yeah, the assault occurred on March 1st, 1989. The victim left her house the afternoon of the incident to go play basketball in a park. On the way, she found a stick which she decided to keep when she arrived at the park. Many of the school's athletes were there watching or and or participating in a baseball practice game. One of the boys came over to her and asked her to come down to a basement of a nearby house for a party. The house was adjacent to the park and the owners were in Florida with only the grandmother being home at that time. After initially refusing, she agreed when she was told that one of the boys that she had a crush on, the boy's brother, Wom, that she had a crush on, would go on a date with her if she would do this. He escorted her to the basement. When they reached the basement, 12 boys from the park were there. One of the boys removed his pants and underpants and the victim removed her shirt. Seven boys stayed out of all the 12. Some of them left. Seven of the boys I stayed out of the 12 stayed. All football players and all seniors, but one, the victim, was then orally raped. She was forced to bend over and the boys took turns vagina, vaginally penetrating her. The victim was then penetrated with a broomstick and then she was penetrated with a baseball bat. The broom and the bat were covered with plastic bags coated with Vaseline. 
After it was over, she promised not to tell, then waited outside the house for a long time, waiting for the promised date that the boy's brother promised her that she would be able to have with the guy. And this this never happened. She never went on a date with them. With him. A number of the boys later attempted to get the victim to do it a second time and to come down to the basement a second time to repeat the incident. The first staff member to report the incident was a teacher who overheard a student discussing the rumors with a classmate in the class. The student had been asked earlier to videotape a planned second incident which never took place. Thank God. The vice principal then called the police on March 22nd, three weeks after the assault occurred. Police interviewed the vice principal and the victim's swim coach. The latter of whom had heard about the incident from the victim herself three days after the incident. The main focus was to establish if the victim had given consent or whether she was incapable of giving consent. During her interviews with the victim, it became clear to Brosson that the victim did not completely understand what have had what had happened to her because she was she had like like intellectual like disabilities. So she would have not known she could have said no. During the investigation, it became clear that the victim still wanted the athletes to like her throughout um, this whole case until like the very end and in the movie and that she did not want to get them in trouble because she still liked them because she didn't realize what happened to her. After a 23-week long trial from 1992 to 1993, Christopher Archer and Kevin Scassar were convicted in 1993 of second degree count of conspiracy and two first degree counts of aggravated sexual assault with a bat and a broom. Kyle Skenzer was found guilty of second degree conspiracy, first degree aggravated sexual assault by use of force, and second degree attempted ag aggravated sexual assault. Brian Garber was convicted of a single third degree conspiracy charge. Christopher Acker Kevin Skatsker and Kyle Skatsker all sentenced to the maximum of 15 years in a young adult offender's prison. Brian Groper was sentenced to three years of probation and 200 hours of community service. On appeal, the convictions for the minor offenses were reversed, but the convictions for the major offense of first-degree aggravated sexual assault were upheld, with Kyle Schrenard's sentence being reduced to seven years. All three began serving their sentences in 1997. In 2004, after all three had served their prison sentences, they again tried to appeal their convictions and tried to clear their names to stay off the New Jersey's sexual offender registry. The convictions were upheld to this day. So, if you guys like this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Bye guys, see you next video.